Welcome to the first. You have a story. If you look back on your life, you've done things for the first time that no one in your family, in your town, in the country has done. This is Dr. Sandy. You have unknowingly paved the way for others without knowing it or even acknowledging it. This is where you tell your story so that those who come after you can walk in your footsteps to build their own firsts. Hey everybody, welcome Sharice and Johnson Moore, your hope builder. Sharice loves lifting up others out of their sorrows by guiding them to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. Ministry is her first love and her ministry has opened many doors for her to become a business owner, an author, a gospel artist, motivational speaker, podcaster, and executive producer of shows. Sharice is the author of Coming to Love Yourself. It is an inspirational autobiography that details her life for her first 40 years. Coming to Love Yourself Study Guide to Building Your Self-Worth is a workbook created that helps someone get back to the things they love and cherish in their lives. Sharice is the proud owner and CEO of Sharice and Johnson Moore LLC and Channel LBM TV. She is the executive producer of Morning Word and Worship, Let's Talk Sunday, Think About It Sunday, Authors Excerpt Sunday, and Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Sharice doesn't take her assignment from God lightly, and it is an assignment she is proud to have. Everyone welcome Sharice and Johnson Moore. Hey, everybody. Today, I'm here with Sharice Johnson Moore. Hey, Sharice. Hello. How are you doing today? Tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm doing absolutely great and I'm ready to rock and roll and hear all about you. Well, hello, my name is Sharice Johnson Moore, your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. I'm a minister, an author, motivational speaker, gospel artist, podcaster, and also the owner, CEO, and executive producer of a streaming channel that I own. It is entitled LBM TV. And um, that is what I do. (laughs) Tell me about your book. You're an author. Let me know what your book is and let our audience know where they can get it. Okay. Um, The title of my book is entitled Coming to Loving Yourself. It is a... It is a autobiography inspirational book. Um, It details the life of me, the author. And it is a book written from my life experiences. And um, I've experienced trauma. I have experienced the good, bad, and the ugly. And I wanted to, I really wrote the book on the context of wanting to help other women, wanting to help other women overcome the things that they have experienced in their life. And I wanted to let them know in the book, yes, you may have your trials and tribulations, but God is always there no matter what. Always. He's there no matter what. He will bring you through those trials and tribulations. And one thing that I have learned in my lifetime that I have experienced is that I had to come to surrender to God. Uh, I had to surrender because of, how could I say it? A lot of things I was holding on to, I didn't want to let go. And I wasn't letting go. And I rededicated my life to God in 2015. Um, after the passing of my grandmother who raised me and my father and my mother. And they passed behind, right behind each other. At the same time? Um, My grandmother passed November of 2011. 
um, my father passed two weeks before my birthday, July 14th, 10 days before my birthday, 2014. And then my mother passed six months later in January of 2015. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is quite yes. a bit of losses altogether. Like, but, and people close to you, how did you manage that? How did you deal with that? Um, how could I say? I, when my grandmother passed, I didn't have time to grieve. Because I had to take care of her affairs, I had to take care of my father, and because he was kind of like out of it, mm -hmm. and he, you know, he he go he could function, right. but um, he had that like he was he was in a daze, you know, kind of daze phase, and um, I I kind of like you know I had to take the reins on that, and um and. You know, when you lose three people right behind each other in that manner, and you're, you know, I, I was still grieving my grandmother, and then my dad passes away. And that kind of like, you know, like, really? Like, what, what you trying to tell me, Lord? You know, and then really, it really hits me um, when I got the news about my mother had passed. And I just kind of like. Did you feel alone? I kind of, I. Ma'am, did you feel alone, like lost and alone? Um, I kind of when I got the news after I got from my sister, I lost it because they were the three main people in my life, and um, and then I really, I really kind of like just started having a real deep relationship with God. With right. that loss, you know, with that, um, with it being to that extent, because that was kind of, that was a kicker for me. I mean, it really was, it was really uh, devastating for me. And it gained, and it, and yes, I did feel alone. I felt really alone. And I felt like I needed to really get somewhere where I needed someone to talk to, but I couldn't talk to the people I knew. Right. So I rededicated my life to serving God into the Amen. fullest. Amen. Yeah, you could always talk to him. I know that's right. You can always you carry every, always say, to carry him. everything to God in prayer, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And that's something your grandmother tells you too, and we always forget it until the moment we need it, right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you you said you were the first author in your family and that you also broke generational curses. What kind of generational curses did you break? Well, I'll say this. Um, being honest and true with myself. Honest and true because sometimes we are raised in a family where we got to hide our secrets. We got we got to you know be in denial and um live in a false sense of being as a person and I just laid it out on the line when I wrote the book I just laid it out and put everything in that book every every you know everything I put everything in the book how and did your family I, take that well I mean did they it. acknowledge that what you said. The things you said were true were they upset that you actually talked about it in, in a book like how did they react to that um my 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 family really didn't know i had written a book until i presented it to them oh yes ma'am they didn't know they didn't they didn't oh you don't wrote a book okay all right um all right so it? Um, my niece, one of my nieces read the book. She said, when I found out you, you, that my, my auntie had bought the book, okay, I bought the book. You know, she's like, yeah, I bought that book. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, um, my son has my, I have three grown children and my, um, my son, my, my oldest son hasn't read the book, but my youngest son has, and I don't think my daughter has read the book. 
But the generational curses I have broken is I went back and apologized for a lot of things that I did to people. Um, I acknowledge my wrong. I acknowledge where I went wrong. I acknowledge that I did not know because no one taught me. And it just got me and my kids to talking and, and rekindling relationships that I thought I had burned bridges to. And, you know, and talking helps so much. Just just getting it off your chest, just saying what you truly feel. And yeah. it's a pressure. It takes a pressure off of you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it opens you up so other people can come in and have yes. a say and just just either they can commiserate with you or yes. some of them get upset when you open up that, you know, things that they don't know or want to hear about sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it also, it all, it also opened the door to ask for forgiveness. Yes. yes. The forgiveness where, um, the forgiveness of uh, of not being there, the forgiveness of not raising them correctly, the forgiveness of telling them, look, this is the way I was taught and this is the way I interpreted life. And by me holding on to grudges with the children's father, it passed down to them the way I treated them because their father wasn't around or didn't want to participate in their life. And, and things like that, and and it brought also uh, brought some clarification. You know, it brought a lot of clarity because my children wanted, well, why didn't you want me? Or I thought you didn't want me. Or I thought you didn't love me. Or you know, and I cleared that up. You know, I I, I sat down and had a real deep conversation with my children, and I opened a whole can of worms. And the worms, you know, I, I'll say it like this: by the grace of God. The worms didn't succeed, but his grace and glory magnified in yes. itself um, yes. And, yes. And, and came to have that open and honest relationship with them that I can clearly say that I had a clear and open, honest relationship with my mother before a year before she passed about why she didn't want me and things like that. She, you know, and I felt like, okay, it's time for me to explain to my children the same way my mother sat down and talked to me about right. our, her relationship, you know, me and her relationship. And are you so, happy you had that talk with your mother? Did you find out oh, things yes. that you really wanted to know? Oh, yes. I, oh, child, was like, like a burden was lifted off my shoulder because she cleared up a lot of things for me of, of what why she made the decision that she made and um you know and she you know me and her me and her she explained her life she explained you know what she went through in her life and, and that made me really what like kind of really understand what does that surprise to you her life or did you know some of the things she told you mm, it, a lot of things were surprises but made me understand better. Yeah. Maybe I, it made me have a, a clear understanding of why she did what she did and what she did what she did. So and it made me understand that's how I had to turn around and break the generational curses because I had to explain the same things to my children. Wow. Yeah. So you know when we and that's the one thing that. I have decided in my life, the rest of my life, I want to sit down and have a conversation with my children. And if they ask me something, talk to them. Sit down and explain stuff to them. You know, um, whether it be a relationship or certain, you know, different topics about money, these things, you know, and I want to have that. I want them to have uh, a brighter future. Now, do and a you better understanding of our certain those, subject. Do you think they'll have those same conversations with their kids? Um, I hope it does. 
I hope I hope it really does. I hope it really opens the door to solid communication with their children when they have them. You know, yeah. so I hope that's I pray that's what happens. <laughs> well, I started a family tree on my heritage. Yes. And that also opens up a lot of things in your family, right? Mm -hmm. You learn about mm -hmm. people you didn't even know about. Yes. Or the one thing I think the biggest takeaway I had was I learned people's real names. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There are people uh -huh. that you call one name their entire life and then you realize yeah. it's not their name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, on my father's side, it's still kind of like you. It's still pretty sketchy. People don't mm -hmm. talk as much. Yes. You ask questions. You know it's not the right answer, right? It, the gut, mm -hmm. the gut feeling. It's yeah. not, yes. You're saying that, but I deep down I know that's not what it is. And you yes. never really get to the meat of that. Uh, you never feel satisfied that you've had yes. a real talk like what you had with your kids, right? Yes. On, my, on my mom's side, oh my God, they're an open book. There's nothing, there are no secrets. If you yeah. ask a question, the floodgates will come open. You know, my yes. grandmother was very, very open about her life. And yes. so I grew up understanding her. While on my dad's yes. side, I, I don't understand. I never understood my grandmother at all. Actually, I had an uh -huh. intense dislike of my grandmother. Okay. And that's, I think a lot of it is because she never spoke. She was always uh -huh. more of an angry person. Oh. And when that happens, you don't really know everything you need to know. Yes, I understand. So I'm so glad you had that conversation. Yeah, and it's also made me dive into my family ancestry tree too. I started a tree on Ancestry.com and you know how some people got some facts about certain people <laughs> and then it's, it goes into, well, that wasn't Daddy's really real middle name and, 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 and it's like, huh? What? And you know, and then you get a lot of different information. Yes. But in that instance, um, at least I look at it like this. At least when I was little, this is the best part of my family tree is I got to know my grandmother's mother. She lived to be 104 years old. Oh, my goodness. God and, and that was the ultimate, how could I say, the ultimate experience. If you get to see, and you get to see the generations, yes. and I can go back to my great, great grandmother. I can, I can trace her roots. I can trace my roots all the way back to my great, great grandmother on my father's side. And, um, and, and, but my mother's side, I don't, I don't, um, I just know about my sisters and brothers. Right. And I know about an auntie, my mother's aunt, and that's it. And then I hear bits and pieces about my mother's mother. I've heard bits and pieces, but, and that's it. And I haven't heard anything about my mother's father or anything of that nature. So I'm still searching. <laughs> you know, I feel like because I had those conversations, I know more of who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know where they're coming from, mm -hmm. the things they did to get me to where I am today. I could, there's a direct uh -huh. correlation of the sacrifices yes. they made or didn't make uh -huh. and yeah. how that trickled down to my mom, right? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. what my mom did using the knowledge that she had from her parents yeah. how that uh -huh. impacted me and so yeah. i have a really good sense of who i am and gratitude there's a lot of gratitude yes. in there for what people did right 
Yes, yes, yes. And it, and it's so it's so important. Um, when I was little, I didn't understand. You know, you don't understand stuff when you're little, but you oh you get older you get. My grandma say the more you'll right. get the understanding, right? So I had, I had this epiphany one day, and I was like, you know what? I was thinking, you know, I said I see why my grandfather was so adamant about us having to get an education because he says education can lead to elevation and and um you know and i didn't understand at the time why he was so strict on me going to school and getting education and things like that and he says because when he was a little boy he they had to walk miles and miles and miles to get to school and so did my grandmother and i don't even think my great grandmother had an education got an education i don't know and 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 realizing i look back on it i say i come from a uh, i come from a i come from people that were not that were not allowed to read or write and they were able to pick up a pen, I mean, pencil, sit down, learn the letters, sit down, learn how to read the Bible. Even the Bible was unallowed, was not allowed. And I, and, and I get kind of mad. I get kind of mad about that with our generation of today, where they don't want to finish high school. They don't want to finish school. They don't want to go to college. They don't want to do... And then they'd be wondering why I'm out here homeless. I got no education. I got no no skills. No 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 preparation for me to excel. And because they don't understand the privilege of that. No, they don't. No, they no they don't. They don't understand the privilege. And you think about it's 2022. And slavery just ends in 1865. That's not a lot of time difference if you think about it. it really is. It's not a lot of time difference. And our young people need to understand that you get the education and you don't get stuck in that rat race of repeating the same cycles where we're, we're stuck because we don't have the education to elevate ourselves you know and then i see you know about money and the importance of money my grandmother taught me that thank you jesus she's taught me about that because she sat me down and said i want you to sit here and figure out my checkbook that's how she taught me she taught me about numbers where these are the bills these are the bills we pay every month and i want you to sit here and add them up for me and that's how she taught me about money she says you pay your bills first then you save your money if you can't buy it she said she had this thing about money she said they didn't allow us to have credit when she was young they allowed african americans to have credit right if you had the credit you had to maintain that credit by paying the store every month week whatever you had the little arrangement made with the store my grandma said she would leave her stuff in the store pay for it while I was in the store until it was paid off and then she let them bring it home because she like said she didn't want right? to be, yeah she didn't want to be embarrassed so people come back to come get some furniture or items out of her house because right. you know she that's the way her mind her mindset was yeah. so but that's typical of that generation that yeah my mom used to put things on layaway Oh, yeah. No, do they still have layaway? I don't even know if they still have layaway. <laughs> they out here throwing you credit. They throw you credit they like it's water. Card. Yeah, you know, you get a credit card, you could get it out. But when I was a little girl, that's the same thing my mom did. We used to go to. I'm in. I'm in Brooklyn. I don't know where you are, but I'm in Brooklyn. And I was born in Brooklyn. Hey. So hey. there was store EJ Corvette. That yes. was downtown Brooklyn, 
And yes. when it came time for Christmas, back to school, uh -huh. my mom mm -hmm. would take us down there and she would, she would take us down there in like June, July. Uh -huh. And then she would pick the stuff out for back to school and she would put it on layaway. Okay. And you pay a little bit on it. Then by the time September came, we could take yes. it out. It was all paid up and you could yeah. take it out. Yes. And she didn't owe anyone anything. And I know, right? Yeah. And, you know, she yeah. taught me about credit cards, like how to use my credit card and not get yeah. out of hand with that and buy cash yes. if you have to. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I forgot about layaways. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, they have a formal layaway. It's, uh, you know, it's like, a, you know, like Finger Hut. Oh, now, yeah. Finger Hut, hey, again, hey, was, hey. you know, it'll start you off with a credit, you know, credit maybe like $300 or something like that. And then you pay it, you know, and I've, I've learned how to really maintain my credit because I've lost my credit before. Yeah. When I was young. I bought a car and then I bought a apartment, got an apartment, and then, you know, got all these other little stuff, this, this furniture and all that, and everything was on credit. And because of my lifestyle, I did not keep any of those items. They just gradually walked away from me because of the decisions that I made in my life that were not positive at the time. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. And how did how did going back to church, coming back to the church, how did that help you with uh, just getting your life together a little more? Child, it has helped me tremendously because the relationship I have with God now is totally different from when I had it when I was a child. You know, children, we turn we turn around and tend to I did it. Go to Sunday school. They send us to church. Go in Sunday school. You learn this little, you learn learn this little stuff. You know, you learn stuff about God and Jesus and things like that. But now the relationship is much deeper. It's a much richer relationship. And as I, I you know, yeah, you could, you know, how could I say this? Each time I read the word, it gives me a different interpretation of what yes. God is trying to tell me. Yes. And it also expands to how I can apply those words in that book to my daily living of everyday context. Discernment. And, and being and being in church and and being in church is okay, but it's your personal relationships that really matter with God. And I found out that I don't, how could I say this? I go to church and I go and participate and things like that. But since COVID has happened, I, I don't go to church on a regular basis. I stay at home and watch it on virtual, you know, virtual mm -hmm. yeah. Facebook or whatever. But um, it's our personal relationships with him that really, really stand the test. That really teach us how to stand on his words, stand on his promises stand on what he has told us and also gives us a way of discernment when it comes to people places and things yes. and you know now like my younger days i anybody you know you know how people just throw stuff at you and want you to do this and do this and do that and and, and you know and try to convince you to do all these things and stuff now it's like Okay, I get back with you because see the first thing I've learned, I, the thing I've learned now is to talk to God first about doing something before I proceed to do it yes. on my own. Yes, and sometimes that's and, hard. Sometimes we we want to rush and we want to we want to do it on our time, not God's time, right? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, now I've learned I've I've learned the hard way when you rush and do stuff, it'll come out wrong. It will come out wrong if you don't if you don't put God first in what you do. If you do not present God, present this the situation of God first, and you have a conversation with Him, like, okay, Lord, um, should I really do this? Or um, 
you know, I have this situation before me and I want to know, should I do, should I do it or not? And God always gives us the inkling of, all right, okay, you can do it. And sometimes it's, it's the whole, it's really the Holy Spirit speaking to us yes. on whether we should do these things or not, because, you know, you have this good feeling or bad feeling about it. And that's what we should we should go on where our, it, God gives us instincts on whether to to step out on faith or no. no I was just talking about this the other day on my on my podcast. And everything that is thrown at you, you have to discuss it with God first. And when you discuss it with God, you go from there. You go with the instinct whether He gives you a yes or a no. And everything that glitter is not gold. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> As a lot of times, it's fool's gold. It's fool's gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looked like gold, but we're some brass rings. So, yeah. Gold plated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My grandma say, oh, that's painted gold. That's painted that's gold. gold. Little paint out spray can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause it'll rub right on no. <laughs> yeah. That that is so true. You know, uh, talking about that, we were. We, my church is back in church. My my husband's a pastor, so we're back in church, and we still have uh -huh. some. But yeah. what I get from going into church is like, I can talk to other people, other church members. You. Yes. If I have a problem, yes, I take it to God. But you know, when two or more gathered sometimes i just yeah. need somebody to help me beat that out and uh, talk it out yes. and get mm -hmm. uh, different or reinforce mm -hmm. reinforcement yeah. from yes. you know what the spirit is telling you mm -hmm. and so i i do i do like the in person of church yes zoom yes. It's fine, was fine during COVID, but I, I don't get that one to one, you know, connection. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. with, with the yes, <clears throat> so there's still a mm -hmm. lot of our members on Zoom, but we're slowly getting people back into church and just even yes, the, uh, having a repast or something after service where you can just sit and talk and share mm -hmm. and just fellowship yes. is really what mm -hmm. I like about the in person. But yeah, a yes, lot of even the bigger churches are just either doing Zoom now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Some of some of them have decided to bring their congregation back into the to the house of God, yeah. and I think that's that's you know it's to each their own, you know. Yeah. And you know, I watch my pastor and first lady um, at St. Paul's. Uh, St. Paul's Church is here in Uniontown. And um, and the thing is, is I miss going to church. I miss going there. I miss sitting in the pew. I sit, you know, and my thing is, uh, my praise is through singing. That's how my pray, my praise is through singing. So that's do how. Now? Do you sing now on, on, when you're on Zoom, do you sing? On, uh, yes, sometimes, sometimes, yes. I, you know, I have a a group. I have a uh a group, a, a Christian group I'm involved with on Facebook, and um, you know, sometimes I might give a message, or sometimes I just bust out in the song. So you know, you know, and it's like you, you know, bust it's bust me something right now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hit me up with something. Uh, okay, um, as I look back over my life and see where I have been, yeah. Jesus, I praise you that I'm not stuck in sin. But way down in my spirit, one praise is not enough. So I lift my hands 
song was written that song was written uh by a um a mentor of mine his name is pastor Derek tines out of pittsburgh pennsylvania and um that song he wrote that song for me uh to sing on his first album his first cd which is available uh you can listen to it uh the title of the album is we shall overcome someday by uh -huh. pastor Derek tines and uh, it's number seven on the track. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And you can listen to it on Spotify, all the streaming, Apple, Spotify, um, Google, you know, places we can, you can stream music uh, uh, from. Yes, That's a blessing. That is such a blessing to have that, to Thank have you. that voice. Yes. Thank Amen. you. Thank you for yes, blessing me with that. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I have been singing since I was seven. So, wow. and I didn't, I didn't value, I didn't value this gift when I was younger, but now I see that it has, it has a purpose. Yeah. And um, like God says, uh, in in the Word, it says the Master gives his uh um his you know his workers he gets one five talents and the other one two talents and the other one one and he says so what you gonna do with it while i'm yes. gone you know what yes. you gonna do with your gifts and talents so and um i encourage everyone i i speak with that if they have given talent whether it's writing whether it's proofreading editing whether it's gra graphic art design no matter what your gift is, use it or lose it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. A lot of people, when I ask them, like, what is your gift? What is your talent? What is your purpose? They'll say, I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. And I I accept that answer up to a certain age. Mm -hmm. Because we, you know, we have to find ourselves and we have to sit yes. comfortably with, you mm -hmm. know, and own that talent, right? And that yes. might take a little while. Mine is not singing. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me tell you, it's not singing. <laughs> I could dance up a storm and I went to school for dancing. But yes. the singing part, you know, I wish I wish I could mm -hmm. blow like you guys. But you have to use <laughs> you. the thing that God gives to you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a physical talent like dancing or singing. Yeah. It mm -hmm. could be the gift of being able to help people, of being able to sympathize with people, to be a good listener yes. to people. Yes. You just have to figure out what it is. And I always say, if you don't know what it is, ask somebody. Because other people can tell you what you're good mm -hmm. at better than yes. you can. And sometimes mm -hmm. you'll say, no, no, that's not me. Oh, yes. And I mm -hmm. always say this because I coach business owners. Yes. If you don't, if you want to start a business and you say, well, I don't know what I'm good at, just ask somebody in your family, what do you yeah. come to me for? Yes. All the time. Like before you go mm -hmm. to anybody else, what do you come to me yeah. for? Right? It could be yes. baking a cake. It could mm -hmm. be a Thanksgiving. If Sharice doesn't bring her a pound cake, it's yeah. there's not going to be any Thanksgiving up in here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I, I, you know, and that's that's how sometimes um, we have to. I always tell, I always tell people, what is it that you're passionate about? Mm 
what do you love to do the most? Because what you love to do the most, that is your gift or talent. Yeah. And, you know, my, my, you know, my son, he loves, both of my sons love music. And I've told them, you know, okay, so write me something, you know, create something. And um, that is the thing, you know, I try to encourage them. I've learned how to encourage them with their gifts and talents and um, go after your, you know, go after what you're passionate about. If it's graphic art design, if it's music, if it's um, helping other people just even file paperwork, you know, do you, you know, yes. do what you love, you know, and then your passion will lead to profit. Passion will lead to profit because that's what you love and you, you love it. And then you go ahead and all you have to do is say, okay, Hey, um, I have these services and this is what I do. And this is, you know, this is what I do. So, you know, it present it as a service, market it as a service. Absolutely. In the, you know, at, at, in, in the entrepreneurial world, per se, you know, because it's very important that we have that understanding, you know, well, that you're talking you know, um, to my plumber. Uh -huh. I had I had a leak. It was late at night. Mm -hmm. like after nine o'clock so i call my plumber okay. and you know whatever you call in a plumber i expect to hear i'll be there tomorrow but he mm -hmm. says oh, you have a leak i'll be right mm -hmm. there i'm like okay well it's not going mm -hmm. to you know by the yeah. time I'm here i don't know what to... he's like i'll be right there uh-huh yes like, wow you know yeah. He had the, all his tools. He brought extra stuff because he didn't know exactly what it was. And yes. I said, I am so thankful that you came tonight because I had water under my sink. I had no idea mm -hmm. what it was. Yes. Or, you know, I could see where it's coming from. And he's like, mm -hmm. when somebody tells me they have a problem, yeah. I feel I need to help them fix that problem right away yeah. and not put it off because mm -hmm. i don't know if i'll wake up tomorrow to help him i know right I I said, what? and and that's good that god is that's good that god has put an urgency inside of him yeah. and he said mm -hmm. i like i like to do this this is something yes. i learned and i realized i was really good at fixing plumbing problems and yes. so now he has his own company. He was working for a company mm -hmm. uh, during mm -hmm. COVID. They laid off. He started his own company. And he's um, like, this is what I was meant to do. Yes. I don't know all the, the financials. I, I'm learning. I'm learning quickly. Yeah. But yes. if you need a plumber and you call me, I'm going to be the best plumber and do the best that I can because that's what God put yeah. in yeah and I said, look at gobble <laughs> mm -hmm. yes so that, that yes that's just like um i get called to sing and okay all right that's you know when especially with that one with my singing that was my that's my first love singing is my first love and someone called me to sing someone asked me to be somewhere someone asked me okay all right oh where is it it feels on you know and i always give them i always you know i so i turn that gift that passion into profit yeah. and sometimes god lays on my heart say i know you know it's covid and you know and i normally charge like 25 dollars if i'm in the nate if i'm in here where i live at but if i go outside of this you know the prices go up of course because of transportation and things like that and my thing is sometimes you could bless somebody by not taking their money absolutely and sometimes i've had that where god speaks to me he says no no that's not that's not what i want you to do that for i just want you to go and encourage the people with with singing encourage them yes. it, it, this it's a ministry singing is a minute i've given you this voice for ministry and you do not you know 
God lays that on my heart that sometimes don't charge the people because you never know. You know, he'll bring, he'll bless you in other ways. Tenfold. God said, I, you know, when he tells me, do not charge the people, he ends up blessing me in other ways. Yes. So, like I said, I always, I'm always listening to God about something first. So you say you're carrying on the torch from, from your grandmother. How do you inspire others now with all this knowledge that you've gotten? from both your grandmother and that you've learned on your own, how are you giving back to the next generation? I know you said you you definitely with your kids, you, you do that, but how are you giving back? Okay. Well, my grandma was a giver. My grandmother was a natural giver. She didn't care who you was. She didn't care what you needed. If she could provide that for you, that's what she provided for you. So I have a nonprofit foundation, which whenever I sell my book, this book, or anything else, uh, I have th this book and this workbook here. Come and Loving Yourself mm -hmm. Study Guide to uh, Building Your Self-Worth. That, I have t-shirts. Uh, I also make custom, custom made, uh, custom handmade baskets also have those and whenever I make money from those I give some of the proceeds to the local uh homeless women's homeless shelter oh congratulations so, thank you yes I, I do that um because I, I have had that experience before as being homeless I've had that experience of not knowing where my next meal will come from mm. I've had that experience of feeling alone out here or uh, not knowing where I'm going to stay, what I'm going to eat, how I'm going to take a shower. I don't have nothing to shower with and, you know, those things. So I give a lot of my, I clean out my closet at least once a year. And I had yard sale and the money from the yard sale goes to the women's homeless shelter. And like I said, I also have, um, I also have, uh, my books and things like that and the proceeds from that goes to that, you know, it's in the foundation is called Lena's Love. That's my grandmother's first name. Lena. And I just say Lena's Love. So, um, you know, and Grandma, that's Lena, what I do. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, and sometimes, you know, I'd be like, okay, well, what do they need today? Or I'll call and, and say, what do y'all need? You know, and sometimes I'll go and clean up my pantries and go take the food over there to them or I might cook something and take it to them or you know and I always how could I say this remember the old song by the Williams brothers it was says don't look down on a man unless you're picking him up and that's my thing i you know i try to even though it might be you know even i, I might i even sometimes do it for the men some of the shelter but i find you know my husband got a lot of old coats and clothes and stuff like that yeah. and i take it over there or sometimes i'll go ahead and say at church you know i say okay i'm having we want to we want to go ahead and help the homeless shelter here in uniontown you know where okay well either you know, you give me your clothes and I do the yard sale or, um, you know, or just, you know, just, you know, ask the church and say, well, why don't y'all donate some money to the shelters? I know. And, and that's that's a part of a lot of things that I love about my church because they also help with the homeless shelter and they and they help with the yes. with, you know, they. My pastor, Pastor Alfred Thompson, he uh, he works for he works with the homeless shelter uh, uh, people. He is called uh, City Mission City City Missions Homeless Shelter here in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, and he works with the director, the uh, director of that homeless shelter. He works with Miss Emma, and they work together uh, for the for that organization for the homeless. Doing God's work. 
I know that's right. I know that's so right. So now, now that you've done all these wonderful things, and you've been the first at so many things, your publishing, you know, your ministry, uh, do you do you feel bolder when any new opportunity comes up? Do you say, "Hey, I can do this," you know, in the in the sake of uh, within God, all things are possible. Like I can take on this new thing and not worry and stress about it. Do you feel that way, like very bold and courageous at taking on new stuff? Well, yeah, I'm gonna say yes, because I feel like God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So when God tells me to step out and do something, I do it. And a lot of times, a lot of times I want to do, you know, I want to do different things. I want to travel and stuff like that. But um, I feel like if it's for me to do, God will make a way. And I, I, you know, when it comes to getting myself the exposure that I need, I think it's very important that we all, we, we step out and stop being shy and stop being and oh faith. i don't want nobody to see what i look like and, no i'm faith. not ready for that you know you got to have that confidence look okay god didn't give me a spirit of fear so i'm gonna just go ahead and do this you know yes. i'm just going to do this thing you know that's just like i just started my um i started uh in that past july i just started my streaming channel and i was tell like me tell me about your streaming channel okay my streaming channel is entitled lbm tv l stands for lena my grandmother b stands for brandon my father and m stands for margaret my mother so that is my you know that's my my um thing where i wanted to have them included in my dream in the dream of starting the streaming channel the streaming channel is available on c1 media network and it is owned by Wayne Manning Bass. See, you can find him on um, you can find him on Facebook and Instagram. And he is a minister. A uh, he is a minister of many churches. Plus, he you know he has the business of C1 Media. And I started the channel because I wanted more exposure for what I do. I wanted more exposure for my programs that I produce: Morning Word and Worship. Let's talk Sunday. Think about it Sunday and authors excerpt Sunday. So, and I wanted to give other people exposure with what they do. Um, morning word and worship, of course, that's meant that's ministry. So, uh, minute that 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 entails ministry. Let's talk Sunday is geared to more geared more towards women, and we talk about topics that women can relate to, you know, like, yes. uh, you know, um, I'm going to just say it's, it's a variety of topics us women can talk about. Um, think about it Sunday is get towards entrepreneurs. I give them something to think about. I give people things to think about if they want to start their, if they want to start a business. And I give them topics like, okay, um, why do you think your business is not making any money? Or um, why are you procrastinating? Or, you know, and I, I just give them a, something to think about. That's why I think about Sunday. And Arthur's Exer Sunday is geared towards all authors of all genres. I do not discriminate with that because okay. everyone needs exposure when it comes to their intellectual properties. And I saw it as a way of opening a door for other people. Uh, all, and, and that's that's one thing that God's placed on my heart to always think about other people. Always think about what they might need, what they uh they have to do, or how they can be involved in something that is wide open to the world. And the streaming channel just added added another level to what I was already doing. It was um, because uh, my viewership on my streaming channel gears 4.25 million people a day. Oh my goodness, Therese. It is geared, yes ma'am, I have 4.25 million people a day to view my channel. 
and I want to, you know, I wanted to, when, when Mr. Bass told me, you know, when I got the, when I, when I purchased the channel, and he was giving me all the intricacies and all, you know, what I need, you know, like, okay, you get viewership, and he told me about the viewership, and how many people it could reach, and, and what it could do for my ministry and what I could do for other people in their ministries and things like that. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna just, right, I'm gonna go and get the channel. But I didn't, I just started off with the four topics, you know, morning word worship, let's talk Sunday, think about Sunday. And I'm trying at this point, I would like to add other people's programs to my channel, you know, because everyone, needs exposure yes everyone needs exposure and i'll say this i have learned something about social media you cannot depend on social media all the time that's correct you know because like they said they had a blackout on facebook like a couple months ago that went down instagram went down okay uh twitter goes down okay um so what you gonna do about your business? How you gonna still bring in the people if the social media goes away? Uh, we can go back, you know. So that's why I also got the channel because I wanted to have other outlets for other people to engage. So what and kind of, what kind of things? What kind of shows do you want? If somebody's listening to you right now, what kind of entertainment? Do you want on there? What kind of topics do you want people to send to you to talk about if they have something ready to say, hey, Sharice, I, I can do this on your channel? Okay. I like comedy. I like clean comedy. Not, you know, not a lot of cursing, you know, because C1 Media is a Christian network. So I want to put that out there as a Christian network. So, um, and the thing is, I want clean comedy. I want uh, laughter. I want uh, like sitcoms and series. And, um, you know, I like movies. You know, we have movies. I want, I want people to put their, be able to put their movies on my channel, um, mm -hmm. you know, because. That's a good one. That's a good one. You know. And, and, you know, talk shows, you know, like we're sitting here talking now, you know, and that would be very good for our, for, for the channel because, you know, you know, we, some people, some biz, some, some industries are overflowing with them so much that you see a new network or a new streaming channel popping up every five days. Yes. Okay, you know, and then see what, 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 and, and I want to have the first time filmmakers, the first time authors, first time uh, uh, conversationalists, uh, you know, where we're sitting and we, I can sit and turn the channel on and it'll be a nice program or a movie I can watch, you yes. know, and I want to you know, expand. I want to, you know, like I said, they have ministry, they have talk shows. If can they it, have, does, it, does it have to be live or can it be pre-recorded or? It can be pre. It can be pre-recorded. It cannot. It can. It can be pre-recorded because that's one thing I've also learned. I've also learned that with streaming channels, you can record. You can record. That's, that's how I normally do. I do my programs, all those programs on Sunday. They record it on through StreamYard. StreamYard distributes them. Then I can go back into my StreamYard, download it to my computer, then go over and upload it to my streaming channel. That's how it works. Um, and some days, uh, my um, the, the uh, owner of the channel, he says, it is certain days that I could do live programming which I will have to talk with his other half, his wife, to set that up. But I just, you know, I kind of like the way it's going right now. So, and, you know, it's, it's, um, 
you know, it's an open door. Absolutely. It's an well, open you know, door. I have quite a few podcasts that I could probably send your way to, to stream through. And I know yes, ma'am. People, yes, ma'am. I know when other people see this, they'll have great ideas. Uh, you know, yes, ma'am. And get the word out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And um, I want to also present to you, if you have a commercial for your program, I will air that too. And the fee is only $100 a month. That wow. gives you a whole month for me to use your commercial as many times as I like. Wow. I, I, okay, like you, the, you know how we do, okay, like I do the program, say so say morning word and worship. And I go ahead and put morning word and worship up, and then I add your commercial in with the in with the um the viewing with the program broadcast, and then that'll be automatically that'll be automatically in the program as many times as I want to put it in the program. So if I if I have like two intermissions, like two commercial times, I could put your commercial in the beginning, or I could put your commercial at the end, and then I also add your commercial to the other three programs I have. Nice. And that's four that's four times in that day, and then think about how many viewers will see your commercial if I have four point two five million people watching a day. Yes. And then that brings more exposure to your business. It brings more exposure to uh, the things that you love to do about your business. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, I know that everyone is on a budget. Everybody. Everyone is on a budget. Everybody. And, uh, you know, and the thing is, is that. God tells me not to be greedy. Because when you become greedy, money becomes your, your God. money becomes evil. Money becomes yes. your worshiper. You know, you start worshiping the money. I mean, you know, you if you you know, I have somebody say, let your work let your work speak for you. Yes. So that's what I'm letting the, letting the work speak for me. You know, and I you know, then you think about it. You you turn around and I have a program. I have a live program every the those four programs every Sunday in the month. So you think about how many times your commercial could be seen in those four times in one day. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> I can make a commercial. Uh, what length, yes, what length commercial uh, do you do you require? Um, you could do two versions of the commercial. Commercial would be where you have a white backdrop and you're doing the talking in the commercial. And um, I have the videographer do uh, add you to the video with, you know, you look like you're in the actual video, you know, I, it, that, or I could do, uh, I could have you do a voiceover where it's like clips and, and clips of, Different your events business name things and, doing, and yeah. things like that and then you do the voiceover and tell us what your business is where can we found that uh what outlets it's on things like that and then you know and then it doesn't have to be my commercial is a minute and 59 minutes long well a minute and 59 seconds long i say it like that <laughs> yeah a minute and 59 seconds long so it doesn't have to be long and drawn out and stuff. It could be nice and short and sweet. Got it. And, you know, yeah, so it could be nice, short, and sweet. And whenever I do my, when I do my morning word and worship, let's talk Sunday, think about Sunday, I can add your commercial in to my, into my broadcast. And oh, that's, a great, that's a great idea. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I've got a yes, commercial ma'am. to made let me get off this podcast <laughs> you know and if you also i also wanted to let you know that if you just wanted to have your voice over you know you just do your voice over with no mm -hmm. video right i could add that to my podcast as well because i have a podcast myself so i could okay. say okay well you know and just just 
you know, you take the voice over. I could pull the voice over from your video, from your commercial, and pull the audio from it, and then add that to my podcast, just like um, I, I have Anchor. You know, you do know, Anchor. You know, you know, you got, you know, Anchor is a nice way to, you know, get your podcast out. You know, and I could pull that. I could pull your voice over from your commercial and add that to my podcast as well. That's, I'm sure yes, everyone ma'am. has a lot of info, but give your info out again for everyone so that they know where to find you, because I'm sure you're going to get a couple of calls. I know a couple of people I'm going to tell about, about that. Okay. Okay. My name is Sharice Johnson-Moore. You can find me at www.sharicenjohnsonmore.com, or you can find me at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com. That's my email address. I also have a Facebook page, Sharice Johnson Moore 2. Instagram is Sharice Johnson Moore. Twitter, Sharice J Moore. Um, TikTok is SNJ Moore. And um, I also have the LBM, LBM TV page, which is has a Facebook page and an Instagram page. And um, um, LBM for Instagram is LBM TV Media. Okay. For uh, Facebook, it's LBM TV Media. And um, I would love to have everyone to support. And you can go find my streaming channel on the C1 Media Network Smart TV app. It can be found on Apple TV, Roku TV. Android TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and Google TV. Thank you so much, Sharice. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming on my podcast. And you're I'm welcome. gonna reach out to you because I'm a business coach. This is really what I mm-hmm. do. And I advise people on how to form an advisory board for themselves, as well as mm-hmm. how to grow their businesses because I've yes, done ma'am. that a couple of times. So I'd like to share my knowledge with that. So who knows? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to start working on my commercial there and uh, kick off, see what's what's going on over at ShariceJohnsonMoore.com. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you so much me. for having me. Sure. This is Dr. Sandy. Thank you so much for sharing your journey on the first, where no two stories are alike, even if the circumstances are similar. Let this discussion serve as inspiration for others to show what's possible, and more importantly, to produce seconds and thirds.